Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you from Lake Tahoe and I've got this gorgeous slope behind me. If you can still see it, it's getting dark, but I had so much fun out there today skiing. And I just want to talk to you tonight about setting energetic boundaries because this has been a really important lesson for me on the road to recovery. And you know, just like we want to do everything that we can to support our bodies physically and to build up energy reserves, we also want to stop the drains. And so that's what energetic boundaries do is they help us stop the drains. Just picture your energy like water in a bathtub and you're working so hard in recovery to fill up that bathtub, but then you've got all these holes in the bathtub and your energy is just draining out. So energetic boundaries can help you plug up some of those drains. And so what is an energetic boundary? Well, it's a little different than like just setting a boundary with someone saying, no, I can't do that, which I'll do another video on that because I think that's really hard for a lot of us with CFS. And an energetic boundary has more to do with people's energy. You know, we're all energetic beings. If you take anything and put it under a microscope, you're gonna eventually get down to where you see the cells vibrating. And so we're all vibrating at a different level and we are energetic creatures. So when we're interacting with others, their energy can impact us. And I found that as an empath, which is someone who's very sensitive to other people's energies, which is what I am, you're very empathetic and you can have a sense of what's going on with people, if they're having a hard time. A lot, I find that a lot of CFSers are, are empaths actually. So I think that's kind of an interesting thing. And so learning how to handle this, these energies has been really important to me in recovery. Um, for one, my husband is a very powerful person. He's a number eight on the Enneagram, which is a leader and a mover and a shaker. And you know, so it's been a really interesting thing for me to learn how to manage his energy because I used to just absorb it and mesh with it and that would just wear me out. <laughs> So it's been a really fun, kind of a funny journey for both of us in it. We've laughed a lot over um, the changes that I've had to make. So in starting to set energetic boundaries, the first thing is to become aware of these energies around you and how you interact with them. Do you tend to mesh or take on other people's energy? So that's awareness is always key. That's the first step. The second one is a technique I've used where you visualize a golden bubble around you and that it repels negative toxic energy but lets in positive energy. And that's really helped me a lot because you know when you're recovering from something as debilitating as CFS, you want to minimize anything stressful and toxic in your life. Just as you might physically uh, detox your body with a light detox when you're sick, like maybe like I do juicing every day and so that helps detox. Um, you also want to detox yourself energetically. And so that means minimizing exposure to toxic people. So you just kind of visualize that, especially if you're gonna be going and being around people that you know that can be challenging for you energetically, that you just kind of create that visualization before you go into the situation. And I found that to be a big help. Thirdly, you wanna let people around you be responsible for their own energetic states. You know, I think for so long, I always felt responsible for how other people felt, especially because I could really tune in to how they were feeling. So I felt responsible in some way with that to help them move that energy or do something with that, that energy. But my daughter said something the other day that really cracked me up. She said, she was talking about a friend that did something kind of strange. She goes, okay, you just be you. You know, and I just thought that was so funny. I thought that's what I need to do. Let people be who they are. You be you and I'll be me. And I'm not responsible for your energy states. That's a real freeing thing. So another technique is the 80-20 rule that I've talked about before where you're 80% aware of what's going on with you and just 20% and the energies around you so that you're not meshing or you're not taking care of, but that you're really focused here what it is that your body needs, what it is that you need in that moment. The sixth thing, I think we're on number six, would be be responsible for building up yourself. So I found that as I took responsibility for building up my own spirit and vibration, you know, becoming, staying a high vibe person and protecting that, that I was doing better with stopping up those drains. 
Another interesting thing I've learned is that we're all kind of vibrating at different frequencies and we seek resonance. That's why we might really hit it off with someone and our, you know, we say we're vibing with them because we're actually in that vibrational frequency of a positive mindset with them. Now when you have someone come into your presence who's in a very negative mindset, the interesting thing is we're seeking resonance and it's easier to be knocked down from a high vibration to a low vibration. So just be mindful of that and aware that if you're protecting your energy and keeping it you know, in a positive direction that's going to support your recovery, that when you're around other people that might be in negative states, that they may not intentionally but they might try to knock you down off of your high vibrational state. So just being aware of that has been really helpful for me and helped me use tools like the energetic bubble and others to keep that from happening. Another thing to do is give yourself permission to leave the situation or change the conversation that you're in. So I've gotten a, a little phrase I like to use is I'll say TMI if I get maxed out on someone's state, like that's too much information and it's just a little flag I need to change the conversation. Okay, I admit I only do that with the people I'm closest to and they know what I'm talking about. But uh, it's a real helpful strategy to be aware this conversation I'm having with someone is taking me down into a place I don't want to go. And instead of feeling that you have to follow that person down that rabbit hole, stop and remove yourself from the situation or just change the conversation. Give yourself permission to do that. The next thing would be to be aware of energy vampires and these are people that literally suck your energy and sometimes they do it intentionally and sometimes not so but just be mindful you might think in your head okay do I know anyone like that think about before you were sick and if you had a conversation with someone on the phone and afterwards you just felt so depleted because you just knew after being with that person it just kind of you didn't feel so great and you know that's just like an energy depletion and energy vampires will actually suck your energy from you. So minimize the time with those people or completely delete them if possible so that you can protect the energy that you need for recovery. And it doesn't mean that we quit on people or we kick them out of our lives. It just means that during recovery, we need to set boundaries around our energy so that we can continue to progress. The last thing I would encourage you to do is keep a journal where you can jot down notes about energetic experiences that you have. Like, okay, I was I went to I was around some people, I could sense my energy was being depleted, and if you didn't do anything about it, write down what you could have done about it. Just a couple of lines, just to say this was the situation, this is how I felt depleted and why, and this is what I could have done. Because what that will do, like I could have said, hey, I gotta leave now, or hey, can we, you know, let's talk about this, that's not really working for me. Um, but write down something that you could do for the next time because that'll help train your brain on how to handle those situations. So just hope that you'll be encouraged to start setting energetic boundaries and reserve and preserving all that energy that you've worked so hard for in recovery. So you know, it might take some time to learn how to set energetic boundaries. I know that it did for me, but it sure has been a help in my recovery in plugging up those energy drains. And the neat thing is, is it actually starts become, becoming a way of life. And it's really a healthy skill that we can take into our new life that we're gonna have after recovery. So anyway, that's it. Hope you'll find that helpful. And remember warriors, life is not over, it's starting again.